What's up, guys? We're about to go live on SoundCloud. <clears throat> <clears throat> I always gotta like clear my throat. It, it's just this weird thing. Whenever I hit record and all that stuff, gotta make sure my mic's proper as well. Got the Cahaba Blonde label out, even though they don't pay me any kind of money. Got the <laughs> keyboard. Beatbox, got everything we need right here. Got the Game Boy right there. <clears throat> Clear my throat. Let's go. What's up, guys? Luna Wolf Max S. This is episode 10, I believe, of uh, the Luna Wolf podcast. Um, it's probably going to be a short podcast. Don't really know. We'll just see how it goes. Uh, right off the bat. John Glenn, first American to orbit the Earth, dies at 95. Holy crap. Everybody needs to start going to space right now because he lived till 95. And he went like back into space in uh, when he was 77 or some craziness like that. He was also a World War II pilot, fighter pilot and whatnot, whatever, you know. I like how he didn't... I don't know anything about John Glenn. Probably should, cause I'm American, but uh, I don't. I don't. I, I do the whatnot when I have no clue what I'm talking about about that. <clears throat> uh, my uh, day was pretty decent. Had a really good day. Like uh, early in the morning. This is almost kind of like a vlog, but blah, a vlog video log. I'm filming this currently, so if you're listening on SoundCloud, you can check me out on YouTube. Same name, Luna Wolf MXS. If you're listening on YouTube, you can check me out on SoundCloud. Same name, Luna Wolf Max S. SoundCloud is right here in this little speaker. That's why I was pointing that way, because this little speaker contains all of SoundCloud. Uh, but had a good day. It, it was great. I mean, we were all joking around, like everybody's having fun. Everybody's doing maintenance, having fun, all that stuff. You know, I even saw my uh, <clears throat> my dude. Can't remember your name right now, dude. Like on online, you're on line name. I might have to look that up. But uh, saw my dude out in the old smoke pit. Uh, but he was saying that he watched one of my videos on, uh, or he watched one of my uh, podcasts on when old girl was texting me and she she was getting freaked out because she's like. She's, you know, I'm like, hey, I found you on Facebook. Because she couldn't find me on Facebook, so I found her on Facebook. She's like, how, how did you find me on Facebook? And I was like, I freaking, I put in your name. Whoa. I hit the piano there. Sorry about that. I put in your name and where you're from, because she's from up north, and then you popped up. It was that simple. Like, if she would have been from the state of Alabama where I'm from, I would have put in her name and nothing else. And then boop, her name, her she would have popped up. So I'm like, that's how I found you. And she thinks I'm a serial killer now because she's like, I can't believe you found me so fast. On, on uh, Did I say YouTube? I don't even know if I said YouTube. But on Facebook. Can't believe you found me so fast on Facebook. And it's like, it's freaking, I can look up anybody. Lofty shot, send me your name. Bam, find you on Facebook. Uh, dry bones, send me your name. Bam! Find you on Facebook. Death from above. Don't send your name because I already got you on Facebook. Obviously, I'm a serial killer because I'm buying people on Facebook, but don't tell my secret. Uh, <clears throat> I always got this knife here. I need to get a better prop to play with when I'm doing my podcast. The camera wants to talk. My day. So I, I saw my dude, you know, out in the smoke pit, and there was a couple people out there, and we were talking, hanging out, chatting. I know it's 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 awful that I smoked 2016, but you know what I'm saying? Like, I'm gonna quit eventually, but at the same time, man, God, you got those days where you're just like shaking, you know? You're just like, oh, God. not from not smoking, but just cause somebody pisses you off and you're like, I gotta have a cigarette right now. So like, <clears throat> I'm kind of afraid that if I did quit smoking, I would have one of those days where people just piss you off and you gotta have a freaking cigarette. I kind of semi sort of had one of those days at work because we were having a great day. I'm, I'm helping out everybody. We're doing work. You know, everybody's got a positive attitude about them. And uh, <clears throat> so, so uh, I was going to go help some other coworkers do something on something that uh, it's it's a job that I'm overseeing. 
So I was going to go help them. Well, the coworkers that I was helping at the time, you know, I was like, hey, guys, you know, y'all got this handled. There's about a thousand of you working on this one project. You got this handled. So I'm going to go help these other guys who don't have it handled because I have not that they don't have it handled, but like <clears throat> I am overseeing this project. My name is on this project. So I got to go help these guys. Well, the guys that I was helping, they started saying like, oh, you're going to leave us for them, you know, and I thought they were joking. So I was like, yeah, man, I can't stand you guys like joking just like that. Yeah, man, I can't stand you guys. Ha <laughs> ha. You know, and they're like, well, screw you, man. They just like they freaking flipped it. I was like, whoa, you know, like. And you know how when somebody, when, like when you're joking with somebody, you've been like having fun all day, just joking, and all of a sudden they just flip. It's like a, a, a dog. You ever seen a dog when it like, when something bites its leg or whatever? Like the dog would just be walking along, chilling out. Something will like hit its leg or something like that. It'll bite its leg like it within seconds. It'll be happy dog. Something happens to its leg. It'll snap on its leg and it'll freaking gnaw on its leg. That's the way it was. It kind of takes you like by surprise because you're like, whoa, we were just having fun. Now you're flipping out. What is going on? You know, so like I kept joking with them and they kept getting more angry at me. And I was finally like, you know, you get that face where you're like, you kind of crank your head sideways and you do like the, 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 the like see my eyes right here. Y'all can't see it on the podcast, but like do like a mean face, but kind of like your mouth expression showing that you're like surprised. You're like. Like that, you're like, you guys really aren't joking right now. You are dead serious. Because it wasn't just one, it was multiple that attacked me. When I was like, hey guys, there's a whole bunch of us on this project right now. Y'all got it handled. I'm going to go help these guys oversee a project that's got my name on it. Like this project's going to have my name on it. They're going to work on it. I want to make sure everything's going properly. And like they just snapped on me. So I gave them the little like crank head. Like, I turned my head sideways, and I was like, you guys are dead serious. So I got mad. The best thing to do if you get angry is to step away. In my opinion, some people, they go on the offensive. But, like, in my opinion, I'm like, whoa, I'm getting a little angry because these dudes, like, we were having fun joking. Now they're attacking me. So I stepped outside and had a cigarette. And that was, like, that was when my dude rolled up and was like, what's up, man? Blah, blah, blah. You know, like, hollering at me. And I'm, I'm kind of like... I'm not saying because I'm always I'm always in good spirits. So if somebody comes up and they don't know the situation, I'm gonna be nice to them. So I was being nice to him, and uh, but I was kind of in that mood like these mother suckers. Like I don't want to cuss. I don't cuss or anything on YouTube or my podcast. I, I think I said the I think I said D A M N uh, on one podcast. It's because it got heated. No, I'm just kidding. But uh, yeah, man. So I try to carry on positive attitude. So I told my dude, "What's up?" And, uh, but, like, I'm shaking, smoking my cigarette, like, oh, my God, I'm going to kill these people. You know, like, it was, like, to that level. It was just so confusing. It's that weird thing. You ever seen two people when they're play wrestling, and all of a sudden it turns into a physical fight? It's so strange, because everybody's standing around, like, laughing, like, ha, 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 you guys are, ha, 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 you know, you guys are crazy. And then all of a sudden it turns into, like, a real deal fight, and everybody still kind of laughing, like, ha, ha, ha. Oh, crap, they're really fighting. It was that sort of situation. I just couldn't believe it. It blew me away. I couldn't believe that we went from, like, joking, laughing to just snapping that fast. It was weird. Whatever. Moving on. Um, I saw this, this uh, news. It actually just popped up on my channel. Trump is going to remain the executive. I'm going to be talking about Trump a lot, guys. So if, if talking about Trump makes you mad... I'm sorry, not that he's selling right now. Like I, I don't, I don't make any money off this podcast or anything like that. Not that he's selling right now. It's just because he's so in the news and he's so controversial that how can you not talk about him? But Trump says he's going to remain the executive producer on the Celebrity Apprentice. First off, I did not know the Celebrity Apprentice was still going on because I don't have. Um, Oh, I see. See, CNBC wants to bring in more Trump with Apprentice repeats. So I guess it's on repeat. Maybe it's still not there, but he still wants to remain the executive producer. The funny thing about this, this clickbait, basically, 
they have Leonardo DiCaprio right next to Trump, like a split screen. Leonardo DiCaprio, Trump. Let's click it, and like this is clickbait. Let's see what it says. Guarantee I'm gonna bet everything. It has nothing to do with Leonardo DiCaprio. If it does, they're gonna try and find some weird way to wrap it back around and talk about Leonardo DiCaprio. Donald Trump isn't giving up his TV interest just to be president of the United States. I don't know. I'd take a little sip off my beer there. Uh, blah, blah, blah. I'm going to skim through this. Uh, has connections with Arnold Schwarzenegger. So why don't you put a picture of Arnold Schwarzenegger? Because that wouldn't sell. Having a picture of nothing. Like, no lie. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to scan back over this again. Nothing to do with... They don't even say Leonardo DiCaprio's name in this thing. I'm going to skim over it, like, real close to show... you. Like, I hate clickbait. People that make clickbait... Not like... Uh, <clears throat> I've been watching Casey Neistat. I don't know if that's how you say his name. I've been watching him a lot lately. I really like his stuff. Um, but he'll do things that are clickbait. Like... Which, I mean, I kind of disagree with, but at the same time, hey, he's making money. Hard to hate on. I can't hate on the dude because he's making money. But he's so talented, it's almost like I want to tell him, like, man, you ain't got to have, like, half-naked pictures of your girlfriend to, to get people to click on it. Sometimes you do. YouTube's a weird thing. If you Like, if I posted a, a boob picture right now, you know, like, or on this thumbnail, I guarantee you'd get a lot of clicks. But I'm, I don't want to build myself up as that type of person. Uh, <clears throat> But Casey Neistat, sometimes he'll have, like, uh, my apartment caught on fire and burned to the ground, you know? And, and it'll be like a picture of him doing this, like, ah, he's got, like, his mouth open screaming. It'll actually be a video about his apartment catching on fire. It might not burn to the ground, but it'll be a video about his apartment catching on fire. So I can, I can deal with that kind of clickbait. He has the most legit clickbait I've seen to where he's like, he says, hey, this happened. And then it actually happens on the video. Maybe not to the extremity, but it does happen on the video, you know? And plus his videos are very entertaining, so I don't, <clears throat> I don't disagree with him. But I'm trying to check over this to see if, seriously, no lie says nothing, nothing about like, it really does not. It says nothing about Leonardo DiCaprio. If I go back, I'll, sh I'll show the people. I'm skimming over the main part. All right, I'll show you all on the webcam. Check this out. That's Leonardo DiCaprio, and that's Donald Trump. Whoa, my webcam's flipping out. Why's my webcam flipping out? I don't know what happened there. It says, Trump the Remain Executive Producer on Celebrity Apprentice. Why Leonardo DiCaprio and Trump? You know why. Because it's clickbait. Like, I want to see who... Uh, sorry, i got to fix my webcam. Is that good on the webcam right there? You see my fresh... Now you can see my fresh beer I got going. I got my fresh beer up here in case I drink all my beer. Is that better? I have a phone here. Whatever. Clickbait. U.S. Weekly. I'm pretty sure they're like, they are like the kings of clickbait. Not real sure, but God, that makes me mad. Uh, I'm not seeing that, guys. Ha! Oh my God! Freaking uh, Death From Above might get something out of this. Y'all know Death From Above. He might get something out of this. Dana White says that Conor McGregor will appear on Games of, or Games the games of the thrones they take thrones and they're like on a chest like a checkerboard and they like play checkers with these giant thrones games of the thrones conor mcgregor apparently is going to be in game of thrones that's hard to say if you think about it game of thrones game of thrones how now brown cow you don't play on my podcast they're trying to play a commercial on my podcast uh, feature upcoming series. UFC star Conor McGregor will be featured in upcoming se season of HBO Game of Thrones, according to UFC President Dana White. Blah, blah, blah. Blah, blah, blah. I hate that when they feel... They have to tell you who Conor McGregor is. I kind of understand it, but at the same time, it makes me mad. Conor McGregor, who's a mixed martial artist, 
who most recently knocked out Eddie Alvarez to become the first fighter in mixed martial arts history to hold multiple UFC titles at the same time. That's a really long sentence. That's kind of cool. I actually, the thing about Donald Trump, you will watch anything that, if you see Donald Trump, you're like, what's he going to say this time? What's he going to do this time? It's like, you can't look away. It's like train wreck. Conor McGregor, same thing. I will seriously watch that episode of uh, Conor McGregor on freaking Game of Thrones. I'll be like, what's Conor McGregor going to do this time? What's he going to say? Conor McGregor is the greatest thing going in combat sports right now because Floyd Mayweather, he was a great fighter and all that. He was a great talker, all that. But like when it came to his fights, they were just kind of boring. Just kind of like for a technical guy who, who wants to know the inside of boxing, it was fun for me. I could sit there and watch it. But for like a party, like I, I throw UFC parties, not a fun time watching a Mayweather fight. It's so boring to watch. You know what I'm saying? But uh, Conor McGregor, man, he delivers. Greatest thing in combat sports ever. So anything he's going to be in, I'm going to watch it. Uh, just click on now. Now I'm getting new news feeds. Can't you show me the old one? Show me the old news feed. There we go. Now we're talking. Warrior Monk for Defense Secretary. That's such an old story. I think I told y'all this. Um, General James Mattis, Mad Dog Mattis, whether you love or hate Trump, you cannot argue with that choice of uh, Secretary of Defense. Amazing choice. He led the invasion, not led the invasion, but he led an infantry unit while he was a, a one-star general, I believe, maybe a colonel, one-star general. He led an infantry invasion into a hostile environment, meaning he could have died. As a freaking, even if he was a colonel, that's ridiculous, but I think he was a general. As a general, to be at the front of your troops, saying like, we're going there, guys. There's shit. Oh, I just cussed. Oh, God! Cut it out! Cut out the cuss words. Um, it's, I got hyped up. Sorry, I got hyped up about the Warrior Monk, General Mad Dog Mattis. I was thinking, like, in my mind, seeing him leading, like, the battlefield. Like, bruh! I'm just like, this is crazy! You know, like, they have a general out there, like, in in uh, Air Force terms, you, you never see a general. You'll see, if you see a general, it's at some kind of grand presentation... You're standing at attention in your blues, and there's a general there. I keep yanking on my mic. I'm trying not to mess it up. Sorry, uh, podcast people and YouTube people. Uh, but to see a general actually lead the battlefield would blow your mind. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's, there's things blowing up. I used the nicer word there. Things blowing up, people dying and stuff, and you got a general at the front. That's insanity. Like, in the Air Force... You're not gonna sit. You're not gonna have a general come out there and do maintenance with you. You know what I'm saying? That's not gonna happen. So, to have it in a battlefield environment, have a general out there who's wearing the flak vest, got the helmet on. It's like, I don't see what y'all so afraid of. Let's go kill them fools. But he's not. He's not like. He's not crazy about war. I heard a uh, saying. I had a buddy that lived across from me in my old apartment I lived in. He was. Infantry. He was Army Infantry, and he did several tours in Iraq. He had Purple Heart. He, he had a, a, a nice ribbon rack, but he got a Purple Heart because their Humvee that they were riding in one day, which it wasn't even on them. They weren't even on a mission. They were like riding around the base, and their Humvee got hit by an I, I am uh, IED. I can't believe I just forgot that an improvised explosive device. They ran over the IED and it blew up and it messed up his leg. It jacked up his leg. He was in really good shape. He hiked all the time. Super cool dude, but he had a limp, like no lie. And I'd seen his credentials. I knew they were real. He had a purple heart, super nice guy, but he was a pacifist, big time, like hippie type dude. And I could, I just couldn't believe, I'm like, you know, you were hardcore, you were infantry, man, you know what I'm saying? Like, being military, he opened up to me and was like showing me pictures, a lot of them I wish I didn't see, but that happens a lot when a, a, a military person sees another military person, they're like, well, check this out. They won't brag to, like, civilians, I'm not using that as negative, it's just like, it's almost like this, this weird brotherhood, it's not like, 
you know, Marine Brotherhood. It's like this weird brotherhood where they're like, oh, we, you know, you've been there, you know, and they'll show you. You know, me, I'm looking at these pictures, and I'm like, I haven't been there, man. I'm freaking working maintenance. Get that away from me. I ain't seen stuff like that, you know? But, uh, yeah, super cool dude, but he was a big-time pacifist. Would not fist fight. He would get out of fights as much as he could. And I have heard that about infantry people, people who have seen combat. They will become pacifists because of the things they've seen. Like, I mean, we can't really relate. Like, I can't relate because I'm like, well, I'd still fist fight somebody or, you know, whatever. We can't relate just because we haven't been in, in combat and, and seen the things they've seen. But that, that speaks a lot to me saying that, like, yeah, I, I've killed a lot of people. I've seen a lot of people die. And I would prefer not to talk about it. Also, I don't want any problems. Just leave me alone, please. You know what I'm saying? That's what they say about uh, General Mattis. He's kind of like that. He's not a pacifist, but he believes more in let's not get involved in silly engagements. I'm not saying anything we're in right now is a silly engagement. I'm just saying, like, you know, let's not... Let's not get the hot head and uh, just go in guns blazing. You know what I'm saying? Let's think about this. Let's, because he's an extremely smart person. Uh, his biggest thing is read books. Like he tells people, read books, because you can learn from other people's mistakes by reading books. I mean, he's not. He's like not talking about don't watch a movie and all that stuff. Read a book about someone's experience if you want to actually gain knowledge, and that's what he does. He could quote. The craziest books off the top of his head. You know what I'm saying? Plus, he's called the Warrior Monk. You know what I'm saying? Like, he, he's almost... And he said this several times. One of my favorite quotes General Mad Dog Mattis, Matt, Matt, Mattis has said was, uh, Be polite, be professional, but have a plan to kill everyone you meet. That's not saying kill everyone you meet. That's saying have a plan in case things go south. Be professional, be polite. Have a plan in case things go south. It's extremely good advice. It, it's what I was saying with the, the pacifist thing. Like, hey man, don't want any trouble over here. Don't want any trouble. We're just trying to go about our way. You know, like that's the kind of like dude he is. If somebody attacks him, because he, he said that. Uh, it's another quote. I can't remember all of it. But uh, he, the quote is basically, if you mess with me, I will kill you all. Like, and that's what, like, with the pacifist thing, like, man, just leave me alone. You ever been at school and you see that, that bully picking on that dude? That's just like, man, just leave me alone. Just leave me alone. Well, me, because I know how humans are, I'm like thinking, hey, dude, you better leave that dude alone because he's being real chill right now. But I've seen how people blow up. Some people's tempers are insane. And I'm talking about, like, blow up to the level where they'll kill you and not think twice about it. But, I mean, you, you've seen that bully that, like, pushes the dude, pushes the dude, and the dude's just like, leave me alone, man. Leave me alone. And then dude just flips out and, like, pile drives the bully, like, blah! You know what I'm saying? Starts stomping on his face, spitting on him and screaming crazy stuff, punching the bully in the face. And you're, you're thinking, like, the bully shouldn't have done that, you know? He shouldn't have done that. That's the way people like Mad Dog Mathis, that's the way those infantry guys who have seen nasty combat, that's the way they are. They just want to be left alone. Just don't, hey man, just leave me alone. And like, I've, I've seen it so many times, dude sitting in the bar and another guy's like pushing him and like, what's wrong with you, punk? You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, man, that dude ain't saying nothing to you. He's been quiet all night. Quiet people scare me. The real quiet, like especially the big dudes that are real quiet, real nice. You know what I'm saying? They scare the crap out of me. Because I'm like, one thing goes wrong. If that dude snaps, he's going to kill somebody. I've seen it. I haven't seen like somebody kill somebody in person. I've seen the after effects. But I haven't seen somebody kill somebody in person. But I'm saying like, I, don't, I just don't go around messing with people. Like, I've never been in combat and nothing like that. But I, I don't. I'm, I'm generally a nice guy. I don't, I don't want no problems, you know. But people, they go look for problems. And now we got the warrior monk in charge. So that's, that's basically saying to the, the world, like, don't be a freaking bully. Don't go invade some other country and, and start slaughtering people. Because with someone like the warrior monk in charge, someone like General Mad Dog Mathis... It, it probably ain't going to go over too well. 
Rosie O'Donnell lists her West Palm Beach resort for six million dollars. Who cares? Oh, I got to crack into this other beer, guys. One more brewski. Uh, before I go, I just wanted to hit on new movies. I did this a little back. A uh, little back. A little back. A little while back. Um, so I wanted to look into these suckers. You got Moana. Uh, it's a fantasy action movie. It's it's like a sequel or whatever to, uh, what's that? Uh, Lilo and Stitch. Is that it? I don't even know if that's it. But one of them Hawaiian movies. Uh, there's a funny video if you can find it. It's this Islander guy. He's from America, but like he's he's Pacific Islander. You know, what I'm saying? he's Polynesian, and uh, he explains how to say Moana because a lot of people are thinking like, and he explains in the video white people and black people think that uh, the big dude is black, and that makes this Polynesian upset. So he explains how this you know this character is not black. He's not white. He's Pacific Islander. He's Polynesian. And it's funny because Mona, it looks like it's like if I saw that, I thought Mona. I'd be like, oh, a movie called Mona. But no, he, it, to explain it, he says that uh, the O is pronounced different, and which I've heard them over there, but I really didn't care to listen to them. I was like, guys, leave me alone. I just want to drink my beer. And they're like, but we're Hawaiian, bro. Bro, we're surfing, bro. Bro, we're surfing right now, bro. And I'm just like, man, just leave me alone. I'm just trying to drink my beer. But, bro, we're Hawaiian. I'm like, go away, Dad. I don't care. But, like, you say Moana. 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 That's how you say it. Uh, Fantastic Beast and whatnot. Don't care about that. Didn't get into Harry Potter. Sorry, Harry Potter fans. It just, it was in my generation. It started in my generation, but I just didn't get into it. Just, I had other things going on, you know? Just didn't get into the whole Harry Potter thing. Office Christmas party looks freaking hilarious. I'm going to click on it so I can tell you who's who and what's what. Um, Jennifer Aniston, Jason Bateman, uh, TJ Miller, who is hilarious. Office Christmas party when he freaking hilarious. Allied. Oh, that's that Brad Pitt. I keep doubting Brad Pitt. You know what I'm saying? He'll put himself in a movie like that Tank movie. He'll put himself in the movie and I'll be like, man, I don't even care about that. I ain't watching that. And then I'll eventually watch it. I'll be like, why did I not watch this? Brad Pitt. Always delivers. He's like, uh, he's like, uh, freaking Tom Cruise. You know what I'm saying? Always delivers. Good movie. Arrival, I heard, is a terrible movie. Let's see. It actually got a really good IMDb score and it got a good Rotten Tomato score. 93%. That's rare on Rotten Tomatoes. The movie Arrival, uh, Amy Adams, is that her name? Yes, Amy Adams, Jeremy Renner, Ruth Chang. She looks freaking messed up in that photo. That's weird. Force Whitaker's in it. I really like Force Whitaker. Very good actor. I might, I, I won't see it in theaters, but I'll probably watch it uh, back home. Doctor Strange. I like some of the TV show. Don't really care. Trolls. Are you serious? Get out of here. That old troll. Remember Trolls? They had the hair like you would buy them and they had the pink hair. Like, I'm, I didn't buy any. Don't get me wrong. I didn't buy any, but like girls, they had buy them and blah, blah, blah. Miss Sloan has got my uh, future wife in it, Jessica Chastain. A bunch of other people no one cares about, so I don't know about that. Willing to bend the rules for her clients, Elizabeth Sloan remains one of the most sought-after lobbyists. Well, whatever, don't care about that. That sounds like politics stuff. I'll probably watch it when it comes out, but I'm going to marry that lady. Bad Santa 2. The commercials look terrible. Bad Santa is a great movie. Go out and watch Bad Santa. That is a really good movie. It's funny. It gets serious at times. It's kind of like dramatized. Very good movie. Bad Santa 2 looks like garbage. Hopefully it's just as good. I think they're just going to do a lot of like pee jokes and like fart jokes. And it's going to be stupid. So that's why I'm not going to go watch it. Hacksaw Ridge. I am. I think it's out right now. I'm going to go watch that. In, uh, I'm going to go watch that in theater. Very good movie. It's about that, uh, basically that dude that, uh, let's see, conscientious objector who saved 75 men in Okinawa during the bloodiest battle of World War II. It's a true story, which is insane. That is insane that someone who's a conscientious objector because of their religion or whatever, that they would not carry a rifle. Like, he refused. I mean, in World War II, you were forced. 
into battle. There was no backing out. Same way with Vietnam. There was no backing out. It didn't matter who you are, where you lived, how much money you made, nothing. You were forced to fight. They would beat you down in boot camp back in like uh, Vietnam, World War II. They would physically beat you until you gave it. They would torture you until you got out there on the front lines. Like, no lie. You could, there was no way out of it. You were going to the front lines. And he said, no, I'm, a, I'm basically a pacifist. I don't kill people. And they're like, we don't care. We're going to send you to the front lines. And you better pick up a gun or you're, you, you're going to die. Well, he didn't die. And he saved 75 men's lives during the bloodiest battle of World War II. My grandfather... I'm not going to like say he was in Okinawa, but I need to look that up. My grandfather was in the Marines during World War II, which if you were in the Marines or the Army, you didn't sit in Hawaii and just chill out. Like, la -da -da, enjoy Hawaii, drink beer. No, it's like Vietnam. If you were Marines or Army infantry, you going to be in the suck, as they call it. There ain't no way around that. So my grandfather and I... I think it was Okinawa. When I say he fought in Okinawa, um, he got, he actually got discharged because he got shot in the head. He didn't die. He got shot in the head. A bullet glanced his head and it knocked him out cold. And uh, he got sent back to the States because like the severity of his injury or something. At least that, I mean, this, that was the story that was told to me. So, uh, but I do know he served in the Marines. I have his flag that I fly with. I take his flag everywhere. Any trip I go on, anywhere I go in the world, his flag is with me. It's about like somebody asked me like, if your house burned down, what would you grab like to get out? And then the flag, it's always my grandfather's flag. I gra grabbed my grandfather's flag. He was in the Marines, blah, blah, blah. Oh my God, some stuff popped out, popped up and I can't get rid of it. But I just think that's insane. I got, Goes to the front lines, doesn't fire a single shot, saves 75 men's lives. That is insane. I'm, I'm going to watch that. He was the first conscientious objector to ever win the Congressional Medal of Honor. You save 75, if you're that, like that's thug life. You know the thug life clips? If you're that thug life where you're going to walk around on the battlefield without a weapon and save 75 men's lives, you deserve 16 Congressional Medals of Honor. Maybe even 45 Congressional Medals of Honor. What's crazy, if you want to get a kick out of something, you have your ribbon rack. Y'all know what a ribbon rack is. It's, it's all your stuff you get throughout your military career. Well, I mean, like, I have a pretty decent-sized ribbon rack. Not saying anything that I'm getting at a point here. I'm not saying, oh, I'm great. I have a good-sized ribbon rack. I don't personally feel like I've done a whole lot. I kind of do know that I've done a lot, but I'm, I'm saying, like, Personally, I'm like, ah, I don't really deserve like all this or whatever. But the Medal of Honor recipients, that is the highest medal you can receive. That is the highest honor you can receive in the military is the Medal of Honor. Go and look at the Medal of Honor recipients and then see if you can find their ribbon racks. Some of them, it's like they have two ribbons and then the Medal of freaking Honor. The Medal of Honor trumps all. You actually have to, in the military, we only have to salute officers. You know, pilots, uh, you know, lieutenants, captains, majors, colonels, generals. We have to salute enlisted people like myself. We have to salute officers. No matter what, we have to salute them. It doesn't matter if you're a chief master sergeant, you have to salute an 18 year old, I mean, not 18 year old, like a 20 year old officer. You have to salute as a chief master sergeant. Ma master. Master Sergeant, as a Chief Master Sergeant, you have to salute a young punk lieutenant. Now, I'm not saying that that I've seen lieutenants tell chiefs like, "You better do this because I'm an officer." And those chiefs, I mean, you got these dudes in their 50s, some like in their 60s, being like, "Boy, you just need to get out of my face right now." I've seen chiefs tell them, tell officers. You just need to take a step back right now. You don't know you're barking up the wrong tree. You know what I'm saying? I can't remember the point I was making. Oh, the Congressional Medal of Honor. If someone is wearing, if they're, I mean, legit Medal of Honor winners, if they're wearing it, we have to salute them. Like, no lie. It doesn't matter who they are. The guy could have retired, like, I'm an E5 in grade, 
The guy could have retired as an E1, or not retired, but got out of the military as like E1, E2. Like the lowest of the lowest of the lowest. Like, you know, like a private or whatever, or like an airman, like a senior airman or whatever. If they have a Congressional Medal of Honor, you have to salute them. It's crazy. Doesn't matter who they are. So it's the, it's it's just funny that I think I have this like big ribbon rack. I ain't done crap. These dudes with the Medal of Honor, they got a, just a couple of ribbons. And like this dude, I, I actually want to look up his ribbon back. It saved 75 men's lives in combat. That's insane. He probably has a handful of ribbons and then the Congressional Medal of Honor. But uh, yeah, that's all I got about that. Blah, blah, blah. It's Mel Gibson. He's the director. A lot of people aren't happy about that because they're like, Mel Gibson, you're a bad person. All of Hollywood's a bad person. All of them. They're all freaking weirdos. I like how they're mad. Like, Mel Gibson said that Jews are bad. Yeah, you're all freaking weirdos. Don't look at him and be like, he said Jews are bad. All of you are freaking weirdos. All the actors, super big time people, they are weirdos. That's all I got. I think I'm going to end it there. Oh, <laughs> I've got this on here. 10 Cloverfield Lane is the movie of the day. Check out the movie 10 Cloverfield Lane. There's a new 10 Cloverfield, or not, it's going to be a new Cloverfield movie coming out, but this is 10 Cloverfield Lane. Great movie. If you like post, post-apocalyptic post stuff, if you like doomsday prepping stuff, watch this movie. Very, very good movie. You will not be disappointed. You will not be disappointed. Very good movie. Um, it's got that really hot girl in it. I can't remember what her name is. John Guz- John Guzman, John Goodman, Mary Elizabeth Winstead, and John Gallagher Jr., whatever. It's got them in it. Uh, John Goodman's in it. He plays a really, really good role. Check out 10 Club for the Lane. I'm going to sign off, people. Thanks for listening to uh, the Luna Wolf Podcast, or the Luna Podcast, episode 9,000. Uh, check me out on YouTube, Instagram, check me out on Twitter, check me out on SoundCloud, check me out on Facebook, even though I don't get on my Luna Wolf Facebook no more. But most of all, check me out in the stream!